In this video, I'll be presenting a complete analysis of the series RC circuit. We'll be taking a look at the mathematical side of things as well as the electrical engineering side because typically in an electrical engineering course you would only be presented with the solution of the differential equation that arises without necessarily having to solve it from scratch. But this video is intended to be instructive for solving differential equations as well as analyzing circuit behavior. So let's have a look. There's also a challenge question at the end, so make sure you watch the full thing. Let's start with some labeling. Say we have a DC voltage source, Vs, feeding a series combination of a resistor R and a capacitor C. The voltage drop across the resistor is Vr, and the voltage across the capacitor is Vc. The current traversing the circuit is I of t. We know that Vs will be equal to the sum of the two voltages. Vr, by Ohm's law, is given by the resistance times current. Because the resistor and capacitor are in series, then this current must be the same current flowing through the capacitor, or, to be precise, the displacement current of the capacitor, which is given by the capacitance times the time derivative of the voltage. So, substituting this back into the original equation, we can see that we have a first-order differential equation in Vc. Now, let's divide everything by Rc. And the reason we want to do that is because we want to convert it to the typical form of what we call the first order linear differential equation, which has the format dy by dx plus a function p of x times y equals q of x. To integrate such a linear differential equation, the procedure is to multiply everything by an integrating factor, e raised to the power of the integral of p of x, where p of x is this middle function. In our case, p of x, or p of t, is 1 over rc. So we'll integrate 1 over rc with respect to t, because t is our independent variable and not x. We'll get e raised to the power of t over rc. So this is the integrating factor we should multiply everything by we'll get the following. Now let's distribute. And then what happens in a linear differential equation is that these two terms always represent a product rule in action. Take some time and verify that this is actually the time derivative of Vc times the exponential. It's the product rule. Derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. Now let's integrate both sides to solve for Vc. The integral on the right hand side is easy because Vs over Rc is just a constant. If Vs were an AC source then we would have to integrate whatever function that is but because it's a DC in this case it's just a constant and we'll only have the exponential function to integrate we'll get the following. Now k is the constant of integration, and we called it k, not c, in order not to confuse it with the capacitance. Let's distribute, and notice that rc cancels out in the first term on the right-hand side. Now dividing both sides by the exponential, we get our solution for the capacitor voltage. But notice that we still have this constant k, which came from the integration. To find it, let's assume an initial condition, say Vc at 0 equals 0. What this means physically is that we're assuming the capacitor is initially uncharged, and by initially I mean at the moment the circuit is switched on. Applying the condition, we can solve for k. Now note that Vs is never 0, so we can safely divide both sides by Vs. And we're certain it's never zero because Vs represents the voltage source. If it's zero, it means there's no power in the circuit. So of course it's not zero, and we can divide both sides by it with no problem. 
this will give us k equals negative rc so substituting back k equals negative rc into the equation for the capacitor voltage we can see that rc will cancel out and we'll end up with this solution for the capacitor voltage as a function of time this term over here is what we call the transient part of the solution because the exponential term will decay leaving behind this constant term which we call the steady state part of the solution mathematically this means that the limit as t approaches infinity of the capacitor voltage is vs the dc voltage source if we were to look at a graph of vc with respect to time we would expect to see something like this a rise from zero that slows down and tends towards the voltage source vs of course the exact shape of the graph will depend on the parameters r c and vs but the general form will look something like this now in terms of circuit behavior it makes a lot of sense that this is the result we obtained because we know that the capacitor will start charging from the battery as soon as the circuit is switched on and once it accumulates enough charge between its plates such that the voltage is equal to the DC voltage source then it stops charging so the behavior totally agrees with the mathematical result we obtained now here's the challenge question I promised can you do something similar for the current I of T what is the steady state value in other words what is the limit as time goes to infinity of the current can you explain it both in terms of math and in terms of circuit behavior just like we did for VC let me know I look forward to seeing your insights in the comments down below